Dunkin is putting a whole new spin on pumpkin at Dunkin with our new pumpkin cream cold brew. Smooth, bold, cold brew topped with velvety pumpkin cream cold foam made with cinnamon and nutmeg spices. And there's more pumpkin for you to love, like the delicious fall classic, our pumpkin spice signature latte. Rich espresso topped with whipped cream, caramel drizzle, and cinnamon sugar. That's how we pumpkin at Dunkin. Sip into the fall season with the $3 medium pumpkin cream cold brew or pumpkin spice signature latte. America runs on Dunkin. Participation may vary. Limited time offer. Exclusion apply. Valid on pumpkin spice signature latte only in all cold foam cold brew. My dog is rubbish. Isms. Isms. Juxtapose. Didactic. Rubbish. Well, not it's rubbish podcast. Tom, Tom. What is it? Ducks fly east in winter. Is that some sort of code? Yeah, yeah. Well, to this week um, we are doing a episode about the CIA and its involvement in art during the Cold War. And that's why I'm speaking. This is a spy voice. I always assume that spies whisper, but they probably don't do though. They probably just speak. They, they with... probably quack, don't they? Quack, quack, quack. <laughs> no, quack. spies, not ducks. <laughs> but, uh, unless they're duck spies. So uh, I better do the intro, hadn't I? Um, secret yeah, on, intro. The secret, secret intro. intro. Yeah. Hello and welcome to Modern Art. Hello. Uh, I forgot what the intro is. I'm so CIA so... secrets with modern artist rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Episode number sixty-two. Are you all right, Tom? Is it sixty-two? Because I've written down sixty-three. Oh yes, that was a special coded sixty-three. <laughs> Tom, I've been reading about spies and particularly relating to the CIA, uh, which surprised me. Funding art during the Cold War. So the, the Cold War, we're not talking about the war in winter, we're talking about Russia and USA. Yeah, yeah, not, not, not too, too cold, or yeah. Or USSR, even. Yeah, USSR. Oh, the US. Oh, I hated an extra S. I don't know what the yeah. S is. Secret, it's the secret S. What's an extra S between friends? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we're looking, at, we're looking at the time when this all takes place. The uh, Second World War's over, and like as Churchill says, an iron curtain has descended across Eastern Europe. And America and the Russians are in a kind of like a, a, a war, and it's a war of ideology, it's a war of culture, and it's a war, a physical war, where they have a lot of proxy wars across uh, South America and in Africa as well. And, and a war in space. A war in space? Was that in... Uh, what was that Wasn't in? Wasn't there uh, the, like a space race? Maybe it was a race in space, yeah, space rather than race, a war yeah. in space. <laughs> so... Let's uh, just to set the scene. Arguably, the peak, the peak of tensions was during the 1950s and the 60s. Imagine America was a quite swing in America, quite a cultural sort of centre of the uh, of the West, a happening place. But also, it was a time of great paranoia. To, to the extent that people were looking out, governments were thinking there were spies everywhere and questioning whether people's loyalty was to America or to Russia. And they were taking psychedelic drugs. Though that is unrelated to this paranoia. There is a, a lot of uh, evidence to suggest that there was experiments by the CIA uh, using LSD. Um, there's a documentary on Netflix I was watching about that where they uh, apparently they gave someone unsuspectingly some LSD and he jumped from a window. Uh, uh, nice. Quite, I haven't watched the whole thing yet, so I'm not quite sure what... Yeah, but they they have a kind of affinity with, like, mind power and that sort of stuff. Well, I watched The Men Who Stares at Goats. I don't know if that was more a military thing, wasn't it? But they did try all that sort of mind power stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying it now. I'm trying to say, well, let's get back to the art using the power of my mind. I've just got this urge suddenly to jump out the window. 
<laughs> oh no, you can't. Yeah, well, that's not bad. You're on the. Uh, well, no, that's not. Uh, I'm sadly disappointed because you're actually on the ground floor. I said, "Oh, that's rubbish. You're on the ground floor, Tom. Are you going to jump? You got to be high up." I thought maybe it was you, like doing your mind control on me. No. <laughs> So this is a time of real paranoia and uh, there were trials of celebrities and cultural figures where creatives would face tough questioning to where their loyalties lay. Even artists were questioned about their loyalties. I mean, for one for what example, right, there was one abstract artist. He was uh, questioned because the, the person was working for either, I don't know, the FBI or someone in uh, the American government. And he accused this artist of being like working for the Russians because he thought some of his abstract works were actually maps of strategic American sites. Nice. And then there's one where an artist was being questioned, saying, you're like communist, you, you're a communist sympathiser. And uh, he had to actually explain that the uh, thing they were pointing to in his painting wasn't actually a hammer and sickle, the hammer and sickle from the Soviet flag. And it actually was actually just a boat with an anchor. Wow, yeah. So he, he managed to talk his way out of that one. Yeah, I think I think using using a lot of aquatic and sea. Yeah, na- naval phrases. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough naval <laughs> phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> and magazines and comics ran anti-communist stories. For instance. Uh, you know, Captain America used to fight Nazis. During the Cold War, he was now actually fighting communists. And Life magazine at the time ran a sort of feature describing creatives and intellectuals of the time as dupes of the Kremlin. And it featured pictures of Albert Einstein, people like Norman Mailer, Charlie Chaplin. And at the time, there were even movies that were made, being made that were anti-communist. So, Tom... I'm going to test your knowledge. I think we need a uh, a mini quiz, a Cold War movie mini quiz. Yay! Yeah, right. Can you do a little intro for the Cold War movie mini quiz? Cold War movie mini quiz! <laughs> <laughs> right. So, 1960s and 1950s, the height of the Cold War, they made movies that were anti-communist and they were released in cinemas. Right now, I've got four movies, but one of them is not from the 1960s or 1950s. But is it anti communist? It is anti communist, but you've got to guess which one it is. And I'll give you a little synopsis, right? Okay, okay. so you ready? So, uh, can you do number one, please? Number one, I was a communist for the FBI. An FBI agent infiltrates the US Communist Party and his cover's so good that even his family starts to suspect he may be a commie. So that's the first one. Number two. I was a communist werewolf. Soviet werewolves escape to the West and some arrive in the United States. So you can imagine the trouble having Soviet werewolves in the US. Yeah, that's making me think of Michael J. Fox for some reason. Oh, they have Team Wolf. And uh, no, I did, I, know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great too. We love. I thoroughly recommend watching Teen Wolf for you, those of you listening. I like Teen Wolf. <laughs> There's that famous scene where he does basketball. I don't know why being a werewolf gives you an advantage at basketball. And in fact, he should have been chucked off the court. Yeah, well, it's intimidating. I, I mean, have you ever played basketball with a werewolf? No. No, I I imagine, I mean, I haven't either, but I imagine it's quite intimidating. And certainly not the one that's an American werewolf in London. There's no way I'd play basketball with him. Is he a communist? No, he wasn't. He was an American who was in London. Another good werewolf movie. Um, Right. Yeah. Next one is this. Number three. Red Planet Mars. A US scientist finds out that Mars is apparently utopia and the people of Earth can be saved. This brings about sweeping changes on Earth it, that include the USSR. But is it all a Nazi hoax? 
Number four. Um, right, the commies are coming. The commies are coming. A man who does not appreciate freedom wakes up to find he's living in a commie nightmare. Right. So which one do you think? Do you want a recap of them, Tom? Okay, so let on recap. So the first one was... Uh, I was a communist for the FBI. I was a communist in the FBI. Okay, that could be 50s or 60s. The second one was the werewolf one. And like yeah. that went off on more modern day references. Or I say modern day, like 80s. And, and then, then the next the, one, Red yeah, Planet next, Mars. Red, that definitely is like, you know, pre-1970. I okay. feel like that one, yeah. And the commies are coming, the commies are coming. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to go for number two as the odd one out. I was a communist werewolf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All oh, right, yeah, you're, you are correct, <laughs> Yes! <laughs> actually it's so new it's in post-production and it's coming out i believe in 2021 yeah and the reason why it's still in post-production is because the communist released coronavirus <laughs> <laughs> oh no we'll get shut down by someone the just to say the official policy of modern art is rubbish is that no one knows nobody knows <laughs> who started it <laughs> So, as well as being paranoid and routing un-American commie lovers at home, you know, it was a battle of ideologies. And part of this was also in culture. So there was a culture war going on between America and Russia. And they wanted, the Americans wanted to get their culture out to the world and say, look, because they were worried that communism was going to spread everywhere. Well, was it quite fashionable or something? What was that? Communism. Was it quite fashionable in America with the youth? I don't know. There were a lot of artists that had communist sympathies. They've been over to Mexico. Even a Jackson Pollock, who we're going to uh, talk about, he he when I had a stint in Mexico. So there were a lot of artists that did have quite a uh, left leaning uh, views on things. Sure, yeah. Probably the nature of being an artist a lot, I think. So the Americans wanted to show that their art as well as themselves they were a free nation and look at this our artists are free and modern and they can do what they want except be, except be communist just well, thought I'd better add that in they can do what they want except be communist yes <laughs> they can't I, I don't know if they can use red and they can't use hammer and sickles yeah, <laughs> yeah. only a uh, naval symbols allowed <laughs> What you've got to imagine is you've got this modern art that's that's in America now, especially in the 1930s. A lot of great European artists moved to America. So America was quite a cultural hub for modern art as well. And in Russia, their style of art was called socialist realism. Now, it's a style of idealised realistic art that depicts sort of like farmers working in their fields or people being nice to Stalin probably you know people being happy the ordinary man going about their ordinary daily work their daily toil although it showed what was going on in communist Russia to an extent it was very state controlled unlike another art form called social realism uh, which is not to be confused with what this is socialist realism would social realism would show all the harsh realities of the life of people's lives but, yeah, but it would be what, so social realism might be more critical of the state. Yes, yes. So, although I will say, and I will put on the website, as we do every week, uh, a, a couple of pictures or a link to a couple of pictures, um, just so you can see. I mean, the actual way these paintings were made were actually, they're really well executed and really good drawings and really, sorry, really good paintings. So... What America did was they thought they wanted to promote this. So in the 1940s, they decided to hold an art show and it was showing 
various different works. And in particular, it included, as well as a lot of famous modern artists, it included the work of a new style which was called Abstract Expressionism, which is a work that was done by various American artists, but particularly it was a style that was pioneered uh, largely in part by the, an artist called Jackson Pollock, which you've, you've seen his work, haven't you? Yeah, so Jackson Pollock is just all the paint splashing all over the canvas, yeah. isn't it? It's kind of got a real rhythm to it. And he would, you know, he's like this all American artist and he's put his canvas on the floor and he's dripping his paint over it. He's smoking, chain smoking, he's drinking. He's kind of like, he's got like an American cowboy feel And, and he finishes him. it, doesn't he? He finishes it and then he puts his name in big letters right across the middle. middle. Jackson Pollock. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that don't know Jackson Pollock, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we refer to that in a previous episode? Yes, we were talking about Gavin Turk, the artist Gavin Turk, and we'll put a link to the episode. What what he did was he actually took that Jackson Pollock style but wrote his signature Gavin Turk loads and loads of times in the style of... Jackson Pollock. Oh, right, yeah. So Jackson Pollock didn't actually write his name. You see, I've, no. I've mislearned something there. Yeah, oh, no. <laughs> well, you certainly didn't mislearn it from modern art is rubbish. Well, it's not from anywhere else, I'll be honest. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so you've got this artist, it's all American, and he's got, uh, and along with other artists, this really free, expressionistic artwork. So... As I was saying, there was a there was a in 1947 the American State Department decided to make an art show called the Advance in American Art Show, and it contained all the great American artists of the time, as well as the abstract artists like Jackson Pollock. It included artists like jo Georgia O'Keeffe and other great modern painters. And it was set to be a triumph for showing the free expressive avant-garde to Europe. But people looked at it and it came under a lot of uh, fire. A lot of the public and some political figures who didn't really like it. What year are we in at the moment? This is 1947 when the art show was. So this right, is yeah, the late so, yeah. 40s. But the whole period this takes place, this story takes place, is the full, uh, late 40s, 50s and uh, early 60s. One of the political figures who didn't like it was a Republican uh, called George Dondero. And he actually believed that, you know, as you do, modernist art was a worldwide conspiracy. In one speech, he described things like, he said that, he suggested that cubism aimed to destroy society by design disorder. Well, that seems quite a reasonable opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and he also thought that Dadaism aimed to destroy by ridicule. I mean, that's not far from the truth, to be fair. I mean, the destruction part of it, well, is that what they wanted? But it was ridicule, wasn't it, Dada? Ridiculing the madness of the world. Yes, yeah, so maybe we'll give, him a, we'll give him a pass for that one. But I don't think <laughs> yeah. he... But my question is, was George Dondero a real... Uh, scholar of Dardarism and come to that con conclusion after listening to the three-part Dada series of Modern Art is yeah, Rubbish. Yeah, so this George Dondet, we haven't actually mentioned the CIA yet, have we? No, we're mentioning the backdrop to it. Oh, the backdrop, we're still in the backdrop, yeah. But also the precursor to the CIA was involved in this art exhibition. <laughs> and then he's, he talked about Expressionism. And he said expressionism apparently aimed to destroy by aping the pri primitive and insane. Now, that's the German mu movement, expressionism, which is a very expressionistic way of painting. Uh, and normally it paints sort of uh, human figurative subjects. And the most interesting one was he said that abstract expressionism aims to destroy by the creation of brainstorms. Whoa, yeah, and we know in that part of the world, brainstorms can really hit hit hard in the um in the fall. <laughs> no, sorry, that's hurricanes, isn't it? Sorry, <laughs> I was. <brainstorms. laughs> so, did you? Uh, I mean, did you have a brainstorm when you looked at Jackson Pollock's work, or you know, when you saw Rothko? Were you quite 
brainstormed by it. Um, no, I don't I, think so. I find them quite relaxing, to be honest. I like the sort of like zone out and just look yeah, at no, them. that that's familiar. Yeah, definitely relaxation. Definitely with the Rothko, which I saw a couple of years ago. Yeah, in London, that that was definitely a very peaceful experience. So. You've got to imagine that that kind of thing's going on. And then even President Truman, who actually was a moderate Democrat, he, he described uh, modern art. Uh, I, I actually got a quote here. He said, I don't pretend to be an artist or a judge of art, but I am of the opinion that so-called modern art is merely the vaporings of half-baked lazy people. An artistic production is one which shows infinite ability for taking pains and if any of these so-called modern paintings show any such infinite ability i am very much mistaken so he's quite upset and he also even uh compared uh renaissance sort of like earlier painting to jesus and modern art to lenin so you can imagine that kind of played into that uh communist yeah. Modern art, not, not not a Duchamp's fan. Then we, I take it. <laughs> no. So, as a result of this pressure, the first attempt to promote the art by by the U.S. State Department was cancelled. They cancelled the show early, and um, they actually even had a bargain garage sale. Well, no, not a garage sale, but they sold off the artworks that they purchased for the show, a show for a bargain. For instance, you could get a Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, they sold one of her works for thirty, around about thirty dollars. Who and did? When you say they, who's they? The American government, because the American government sold off the painting, the works that they bought oh, for right, the show. Yeah. Well, so that was a bargain for someone, wasn't it? Yeah. Do you know how much that is? Even in today's money, I, that works out of three hundred and forty-six dollars. Total bargain. So, we've got the scene there, and you can imagine, like, well. They've got all this really, really good art. Now, the CIA, they still thought, well, no, actually, this art's really pretty good, you know, especially the abstract expressionists. So they thought, but, you know, with the pressure from the government, they still think it's quite good to get this art out there and get it seen. So they think, right, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go undercover. Did you like my spy thing? Undercover. Sorry, did you say undercover? Yeah. <laughs> So, they actually created a sort of like a hidden arts council where, which was made up of museum directors and sort of millionaires and cultural elites. And they had secret meetings to actually promote this art. Sort of like how they did it was they set up a meeting with a, say, a rich patron or a rich millionaire and just say to him, would you like to uh, head up a foundation? And the, the people would probably go, yeah, yeah, I'll, sit, I'll, I'll go ahead of your foundation. And then they'd sort of like set up a fake foundation with this letterhead. And then basically the CIA would pump money into this foundation so that it could be used to pay for and, and fund art exhibitions throughout the world. Cool. Yeah, so, and also they set up what was called almost like a Congress for Cultural Freedom, which had 280 employees and offices in 35 countries. And it was all created by the CIA undercover with, with secret names. And it was there to promote American art. So they promoted, you know, you can imagine the cultural impacts if you have like they say, like the uh, a symphony orchestra from America going and playing a concert somewhere in Europe. And then when people hear it, they just think, oh, America's great, this is amazing. You know, the, the propaganda and publicity for this American culture is amazing. So they actually did this with American art. So they were able to hold art shows and hold them around the world in Europe and everywhere. And it was all paid by the CIA, but all sort of under clandestine thing. And yeah, so the, pre the president knew nothing about it. I don't know how much the president did at the time. Probably probably not much. It was all very yeah. conspiracy well, theory at the time. All right, and yeah. Well, he would have thought it was shit anyway, so. <laughs> so. Some of this shows the sort of example of how it worked. 
They were having an exhibition of American abstract expressionists at the time. Now, you can imagine walking in, it's like, wow, this is so free, this work. It's so avant-garde and it's so, it's the complete opposite to what the Russians were producing. And one of the directors of the Tate Gallery in London saw this exhibition. He thought, oh, yeah, you know, really like to have this in uh, in the UK. So it'd be really cool. And unfortunately, they couldn't afford it. And so I think, well, how are we going to bring it here? And then mysteriously, ahead of one of these foundations, a foundation stepped forward and suddenly had the money to promote and to pay for the exhibition to come to London so the Tate could have it. Yeah, it's um, it's amazing they had any funding with the amount they sold that Georgia O'Keeffe for. <laughs> <laughs> Now, a short advertisement break. <clears throat> Ducks fly north in winter. And the oranges are rolling down the embankment. Take this totally unique turtle art print. If you look at the details within the shell, you will see that it contains details of several very sensitive sites within the country. Bearing in mind this is totally unique and do not let anyone else see it or reproduce it. Special agent! I can't believe you are such an idiot! You're a total embarrassment to the CIA. You're an embarrassment to yourself and to the good nations of the United States. This turtle art print is available for free download on the Modern Artist Rubbish website and you have encoded it with all our precious details. Now all our secrets are out. What do you have to say for yourself, you imbecile? So just head over to modernartisrubbish.com and subscribe to our email list to get your free artwork and to be updated on the latest Modern Art is Rubbish news. And so American abstract expressionism, it arrived very, very quickly and it became to great prominence in a rapid amount of time. And it was a lot to do with the fact that the CIA actually were funding these operations. Now, having said that, None of the artists were actually aware of the fact that this work was being promoted in this way. They were just doing their painting. Cool. Yeah. So, um, Tom, that's it for our CIA communist special. So, uh, it's just just to ask people if you uh, can subscribe. And also, uh, please join us on Facebook and all of our, all other social media channels, which you can find on our website, modernartisrubbish.com. And if you want to get in contact with us, and we do love to receive emails, please email us at info at modernartisrubbish.com. Um, so, Tom, I believe it's just buys. 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 Let's go shop small. Let's go into town and lose track of time. Let's go grab a bite with double everything. Let's try getting dressed up again to see all the familiar faces. Hey, how's it going? Let's go pick up our chat where we left it. Because there's nothing like shopping small. Let's go now, then let's go again. Let's go shop small with Amex. Dunkin' is putting a whole new spin on pumpkin at Dunkin' with our new pumpkin cream cold brew. Smooth, bold, cold brew topped with velvety pumpkin cream cold foam made with cinnamon and nutmeg spices. And there's more pumpkin for you to love, like the delicious fall classic, our pumpkin spice signature latte. Rich espresso topped with whipped cream, caramel drizzle, and cinnamon sugar. That's how we pumpkin at Dunkin'. Sip into the fall season with the $3 medium pumpkin cream cold brew or pumpkin spice signature latte. America runs on Dunkin'. Participation may vary. Limited time offer. Exclusion apply. Valid on pumpkin spice signature latte only in all cold foam cold brew.